Well, recently on the Today Show, Jimmy Fallon shared a story when he was friend zoned by actress Kate Hudson. Take a listen. And we're at Kids in the Hall, and she sees. Chris Robinson, the lead singer of the Black Crows, and we meet him for the first time. I go, hey, what's up? I'm a big fan, blah, blah, blah. And then the next day, we we're going to go ice skating together in Central Park. We ice skated like maybe three or four times around the rink, and then I go, so what are you doing uh, now? She goes, I got to go because I'm, I have a date with <laughs> Chris Robinson from the Black Crows. <laughs> the lead singer of the Black Crows. I go, oh, well, I, of course, I go, well yeah, of course, of course, what are you doing? I'm like, on skates, like, <laughs> taking my skates off. Oh, so that was on Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon. He's opening up to Margot Robbie, a uh, beautiful and talented actress. I felt bad for her, but it's kind of a funny story. She ended up marrying the man, obviously. Have you guys ever been in this position before? Uh, not in his position. I think I've been the friend zoner, meaning putting people in the After friend zone. After a date, like you've gone on a date and you're like... Hey. Well, I didn't know it was a date yeah. at the time. I remember going in college. My dates haven't been that fancy. In college, yeah. I went to a fast food restaurant with a guy, and I thought we were just going to go get food. food. I just needed a ride to the fast food restaurant. And lo and behold, everyone was like, he likes you. He likes you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? All we did was go to, to McDonald's or something. Oh, yeah, that's I've a zone for sure. I've definitely friend zoned people before because when you're younger, you don't think that they're trying to date you. You're just like, oh, this person's really funny or I like hanging out with them. And then you just keep hanging out. And when you do enough solo hangs, eventually they want to date you. And solo you're like, hangs. oh, I need to deal with this right now. I was just having fun, but then you feel bad. Jordan, yeah. you know me. I'm a black and white person. Yeah. Like, if you want to go on a date, say, I want to go on a date. It's that simple with me. Yeah, no, no question. I uh, I friend zoned somebody, but I didn't know I was even into the zone where it had to be a decision. Yeah. There was a woman I worked with. This was about a decade ago. We had worked closely together, and I was still relatively new. And everyone at this workplace, they were a, a, a group of friends, women and men, di different walks of life, very diverse workplace. It was a cool spot to work. Uh, so w the woman invited three of us in the same pod that worked on the same project over for dinner. She's going to cook for us. Mm -hmm. She was kind of like talkative, slightly obnoxious. I, I don't want to be <laughs> negative, but she could like really wear on you if you're stuck talking to her alone. Yeah. So I agreed to go because I was new and I wanted to you know, ingratiate myself in with everybody. So I went to the dinner. So I show up to her house on time, 630, like everyone was supposed to. I get there, 630. The food is she's still cooking. I'm the first one there. A little bit awkward, but everyone's going to be there soon. 6.45, 7 o'clock, 7.15. Oh! She goes, oh, I guess nobody else is coming. She it was planned it? me and her, the two other guys, and the other woman that we worked with all were in on it. I was stuck there having dinner with her. She made uh, spaghetti. The noodles were not cooked. What do you mean? She oh. had no cable. Oh, she oh. gave you al dente. What are you talking it was about? Al, it was al disgusting. Oh. And, Wait a second. So they, uh, they set you up? As everybody set Everyone you up. was in so on it? So they knew it was a date? That's weird. Right? Don't ever do that. And I thought these people were my friends. Also, Clearly, maybe that's they your were. co so that makes <laughs> it really awkward and you have to go back to Incredibly work. Incredibly awkward. So it never got, like, obviously to anything intimate. I, I mean, I think I kind of made it clear, like, Oh, this is kind of like stinks that everybody's not game. here. And I left after an hour. That is minutes. so awkward. That that's was not a good move game. on your part. Like, that's not what adult people do. Adult people say, I like you. I want to go out with you. Let's go on a date. But people like, try to play it cool at the beginning. Like, I feel like no one wants to be so blunt because, you know, immature. feelings are sensitive. You just want to feel it out a little bit. But immature. then sometimes you she just have to She had a shot. Like... The spaghetti would have been a little bit better and meat sauce. Come on, spaghetti with no meat if sauce. If you don't have the gusto to step Sorry, to me not, and be... not for you. For me, spaghetti no <laughs> meat sauce. So like, come on. <laughs> if you don't have the gusto to just step to me and be real, like there's no chance for relationship anymore. Yeah. And, and, then, the and then I feel like it's on you as a person who's, I guess, friend zone the other person to make it clear to that person, like, oh, I'm not attracted to you in the way. It's just so awkward. So there you go. The penultimate way to stay out of the friend zone. Just be clear, everybody. So from one former SNL cast member to a current member, we're talking about Pete Davidson. And apparently his ex, Ariana Grande, has been blocked by Pete Davidson <laughs> on his social media. So I asked you guys, is this a petty move from Pete Davidson or is this a healthy move? because he's trying to get over this relationship. I think it's both. So she obviously tweeted to a fan saying like, oh, I can't see his statement that he made because I've been blocked by him. So like everyone now knows that she's been blocked by Pete Dav Davidson. That seems kind of petty. He could just mute her on Instagram. You can just <laughs> mute, some mute somebody so you don't have to see it because she's obviously everywhere right now. So I see why he did 
do it for his own health so he doesn't have to see everything. She's trending all over the place with her music video and everything, but. She didn't so, do him any favors yeah, with the music video. It's petty and it's healthy. So for clarity, muting means you still follow the person. You follow them, but, but you don't you just see, their, see it. Yeah. Every, yeah. yeah, and he can That'll unmute work. her. I just feel like it's a so really that, dramatic that, that prevents from hurting their feelings, you're saying. Yeah. They would never know. Yeah, and then it helps him too, and it doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing, but there you go. That that's not what keeps Hollywood interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's certainly healthy for this instance yeah. because if she is advise. all over social media. Yeah. What'd you say? I would almost advise it. Yeah, you know. yes, yes. When it, That's the worst when you're trying to get over a breakup and you constantly seeing reminders of this person and the life you had together. Mm -hmm. And then you can't help but not look at their stuff. Like, you're going to be like, oh, where are they? What are they yeah. doing? Who are they with? It's just natural. Yeah, I, I think this Pete Davidson situation is, look, I know a lot of people made jokes when they were together, like he's in over his head. Uh, she, he must have caught her doing something illegal, so he, he locked her into this binding thing. He made the jokes about wanting to impregnate her, so she stuck around. <laughs> and it became just all this fodder. Well, also alongside that is this a comic who is very real with his comedy and would talk about, uh, you know, how he battles with mental illness and how, you know, that's something that, that he's always battled throughout his life and he's used comedy as kind of that vehicle. Well, when you go through a bad breakup, even the most mentally stable can balance, you know, depression creeping in and really missing that person. Especially when her fans are after him. Yeah, so for a guy who's already in a fragile state to go through what was probably the ultimate high in terms of this beautiful woman, an A-list celebrity, would never pick a guy like me, and here I am. Yeah. And then that fall is so sharp, I really worry about his health. So I think for him... Whatever steps that he needs to take to protect himself, he needs to be extra protective. You're right so. about so that. So I got an example of petty, though, because blocking can be petty. It yeah. was petty when Chloe's um, cheating boyfriend, Tristan blocked. Thompson, right? Tr Tristan, Thompson, he yeah. blocked Cr uh, Kim Kardashian, yeah. Chloe's sister. Yeah. So he blocked the sister on social media. Yeah. That was an example of petty. Yeah, and, and I'm glad ever... that she, like, blew him up over that, too. Yeah. Now everyone knows, and now it's in the episode of Keeping Up. So uh, it's like, we have get to you see two that. ever blocked anybody I have not blocked media. anyone, because that's so permanent. And then you have to unblock them or like refriend them on Facebook. Like my friends do that. And I'm like, no. Oh, see, I've, just I've, I've blocked it. randoms. I've never Unfollow. blocked anybody in my life. I blocked like random people who are just too negative and come at you a little too I've hard. I've blocked yeah. randoms. I've blocked friends. I've blocked exes. I've blocked coworkers. <laughs> I've blocked regular. I've wow. blocked neighbors. I've blocked um, for people from church. I've blocked, yes, I, I <laughs> use the block. Regular Dikembe <laughs> Batumbo over here.